What's doing, everybody? I'm Alec Lace. Thank you for watching First Class Fatherhood. Today's guest on the podcast is Cash Lee Kelly. Cash Lee Kelly is a dad who had several videos go viral on social media as he gave a heartfelt response to the current climate in our country as a result of the murder of George Floyd. I'm honored to have him here with me today. And today's episode is being brought to you by Mellon United Hats. These hats are designed to bring us together as a neighborhood, as a community, and as a country. Get yours. Tap the link down in the description below. You can pick one up. $10 of every purchase is going to help our veterans and their families as they deal with post-traumatic stress syndrome. All right, so tap the link down below get your united hat let's come together and let's jump into it right now with cash lee kelly on first class fatherhood all right joining me now first class father cash lee kelly welcome to first class fatherhood thank you my brother appreciate it thanks for having me on all right let's start right here how many kids do you have how old are they i have eight children one of which is about to be born. And uh, my oldest is 13. This is my baby right here coming in here. My youngest is four months. Say hi. Hi. This is the what birthday girl from yesterday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Can you go next? Yes. I love you. I love you. Yeah, I, I got four kids myself here. They're constantly coming in and out of me here, too. That's why I got to kind of box myself in the closet here. Yeah, um, I'm hey, telling you. Cash, if you could, please take a minute just to hit my listeners with a little bit about your background and what you do. Uh, I'm a dad. Uh, I work. Right now, I'm out of work. I was a salesman, but um, I'm looking for more work. And I just, I don't know, I just take care of my kids, man. And that's it. I used to do music. It's like a hobby of mine. And I just write it, write poetry and stuff like that. But I'm just a full-on father. That's my that's my thing that I do. Besides working when I'm not working, literally my only thing that I do is hang out with my kids. And I guess sometimes we go play Pokemon Go together. (laughs) (laughs) That's about it. Well, good stuff. Well, you uh, you put out a couple videos there that went viral. You touched on a lot of sensitive topics. What's been the feedback uh, from those videos so far? And what has been your family's response to it? Oh, man, it's been uh, overwhelmingly positive. Believe it or not, I got a couple, maybe like two or three bad messages from people. I'm still going, just so everybody knows, I'm going through your messages. I'm not leaving you unread. It's just a lot to go through. But uh, no, it's been it's been kind of life changing, to be honest with you. I got people inviting me out places, and Fourth of July, I guess, is going to be really cool because <laughs> we got this guy wants us to come out to his uh his, his property, and he's going to have like a 22 foot water slide, and he's going to have a catered event and golf carts to drive around in because it's so big over there where he's at and it's just going to be awesome i guess so i mean a lot of people have been hitting me up trying to reach out i was on uh, 92.3 in los angeles california two days ago um i'm supposed to be on another radio show in like two days or something like that and uh another radio station on tuesday in dallas texas it's it's going crazy and then people just they're trying to get me to come together and say to be like a, a voice so i've just been trying to use my voice the platform that i got however long i got it i'm just gonna try to be positive with it yeah very well said cash and i think what's important is that you represent an authentic voice of and you speak it from your heart i think that's what's attracting so many people to you now one of the things that i discuss on my podcast uh, almost every all, every episode is about the fatherless crisis that we have in our country i was at the super bowl this year I spoke with Michael Irvin. He threw out the statistics there about 73 percent in the African-American community have no father in the home. What has been your experience? Um, Are you seeing a high fatherless uh, rate in the communities that you've you've lived in yourself? Growing up, I would say, yeah, my dad was murdered. You know, my dad was murdered when I was like four years old. I didn't ever get to know my father. And uh, so, yeah, I grew up fatherless. But nowadays, I would say it's different now. Nowadays, the people that I know, it's the mothers that aren't really around. It's the fathers that are. Like, in my experience, I have all my kids. Minus one, you know, because of what is the ones that I got with. She's horrible. Not, not to downplay or nothing like that, but she doesn't call him. Yesterday, my daughter's birthday, she didn't call her. And call my son on his birthday. She hasn't talked to him in probably well over a month. And, and yeah, I mean, it's just stays consistent like that. So. I wouldn't say it's, it's uh, father's not being present anymore. I believe it's more like a just a broken home period, either the mother or the father. More fathers nowadays that, that I know, like myself, where 
active fathers and we were for our kids. Yeah, and I mean, it shows like just in the statistics, the you know the the broken family units that we have in this country, they're they're wreaking havoc across all races, across all communities. When we don't have, um, you know, strong family figures in our life, father figures in our life, that it leads to a lot of high higher rates of drug use, crime, uh, suicide, teenage pregnancy, the whole bit, the whole bit. That is a fact. I'm I'm living proof of that. Yeah, and, and so with everything going on, how have you approached this entire thing? Obviously, the George uh, Floyd murder has swept over the entire country here. We have the protests, the riots, the response. How do you address your kids when you're talking to them? How do you talk to them about uh, police brutality, uh, racism, uh, black on black crime, the whole bit? How do you discuss this stuff with your kids? Uh, I, I don't I don't talk to them as far as like uh, being in a black on black violence. I talk to them being you know, violence, period, like. I don't want them involved in anything that now I teach my kids that if somebody hits you, like we, we, we ain't, we're not going to turn the other cheek. If, if somebody's threatening your life with violence and they're, they're whooping and hey, you got to defend yourself, but you don't never start it. You don't, you know, you never initiate it. You just let it be. You know what I'm saying? If you can walk away from it, you walk away from it. And as far as like gangs and all that, I'm very, very on them about if you never, if you ever join a gang and, I'm going to get you, you know what I mean? And I make it very, very clear to them about all of that. And the, the generation, this, this, this different. This generation is just is so different, especially my kids. They're a part of like a different crowd, a different generation. I'm all, like I said, my oldest sister, and he's, he's not like a typical 13 year old that I remember. <laughs> you know what I mean? Neither is my 12 year old. They're all, they're just unique, man. And they like to talk about things that I didn't talk about. So I was like 17, 18 years old, as far as like knowledge. I don't really push no like police brutality in their face when they come and show me like hey, they'll come they came to show me about the whole George Floyd thing. It was like that any situation, man, it's never okay for somebody to die the way that that brother died. You know what I mean? And I, I man, it just that was messed up. And that's what I told my kids. You know what I mean? I didn't tell them. So I don't I don't like to make things about race. I don't like to make it a race. You know what I mean? Because I'm I'm mixed myself first off, and my kids, they're they're like what. A quarter black, I guess you want to say that, like 25%. And they're all mixed. They look like little Brazilians. My kids look Brazilian. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I don't want to make it a race thing at all. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. And, and Cash, and the, the thing that's kind of mind boggling about all this is it, that there doesn't seem to be any opposition whatsoever to what happened. I think everybody uh, across the board, once they saw what happened here, called it for what it was, was, was a murder. And I think everybody was in agreement yeah. and wanted to see justice done for that. So that's why it's kind of confusing that this whole thing sparked um, the, the big protests and the riots that we're seeing. And like, like, I, we're, we're hearing for a big call of defunding police and removing police from the neighborhoods. Do, do you think no. if, if all the police disappear tomorrow, would that improve the situation with the African-American community? No, definitely not. You're asking for trouble if that's the case. And. You're going to have anarchy and chaos everywhere that you go. If that becomes the, the situation, I said that in my video. I said that they took the police out, take the police out of the neighborhoods, out of the hood, period, for one month. And, yeah, it's going to be all bad. <laughs> it's going to be all bad. People, I, I, I live in the hood, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm telling you, it's going to be all bad. If the police is not in the hood, that's the one thing that makes people be like, you know, when, when you were standing out there on the street and you're doing something you ain't supposed to do and you see that car rolling, you're like, hey, there go the police. Hold on. You know, if you take them out the equation, you're going to see a, a lot bigger jump in crime, period. All types of crime. I'm talking about violence and drugs and robberies and all types of things. So I know it's never, never a good thing. And I just want to give a shout out to the police force in Hammond because we got one of the best police forces, I would say, in the nation. And they're good people. You know, you got a couple knuckleheads on the force, but never to the point where they're beating people to death. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah, I've had the honor of having several law enforcement guys on my show, a lot of the military guys. I always respect uh, that they keep us safe because I don't think we'd really stand a chance without them, to be honest with you. And no. what no, I kind of don't get, don't. Cash, what I'll get is like, we always, when these when these incidents happen, and it seems almost like the, the race baiting that goes on, we always see the celebrities in the African-American community come out and they're outspoken about it, but they always remain silent whenever it comes to inner city struggles and inner city blacks being killed. I said that all in my video, that? brother. Yeah, well, why do all you think that is? All of that came out in my video. Uh, because it's a part of a agenda. That's why. 
that's why and most of the time it's celebrities that are on the decline and nobody really pays attention to them anymore. And this is a platform for them to get some notoriety. Like I watched my man LL. I love LL. You know what I'm saying? I, I love LL Cool J, but I watched the, the rap that he made. And and I was just like, man, like you inspiring some 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 wrong things with this, man. It's not the right message to put out, you know, because you've been rich. You've been rich, bro. You ain't in the hood. You know what I'm saying? You're not out here. So and like Nick Cannon, I got to give him his props. I got I got a lot of respect for Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon came out and he supported and he was out in the march. And I'm sure that he wasn't inciting no riots or trying to get no nothing bad going on. The brother just came out to support and he stays avidly speaking on a lot of situations. He's not just a one time. OK, this happened. Let me talk about this. No, this brother really he says what's real. You know what I'm saying so I honor that. I, I appreciate that. But the reason why other guys do it is because they want to incite their part of the agenda to get people to do the things that's going to get them destroyed. They don't have to be there in the neighborhoods. You know what I mean? They don't have the celebrities. They don't have to be in the neighborhood. We do. So after they make, you know, they incite people to do the craziness that they do, they go and they're going back to the mansion. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think we all, I think we all see that. And, uh, you know, my, my question would be like, we, we know that move, removing the cops and removing law enforcement, that ain't the answer. What What is the answer? What would lead to a ma- massive improvement within the African-American community? What What needs to change? Well, not just an African-American community, Latino community, white community, you know what I mean? Because where I live at, the hood is it's mixed up. It's every race, bro. And what's going to fix it all, real talk, what's going to fix it all is unity. Unity and, and willingness to dialogue with each other and say, you know what? Forget what they said on the news. Forget what you've been taught by the police. Forget what religion you are. Forget what gang affiliation you got. Forget what your political view is. What can we do to make each other better right now in the neighborhood that we live in? How can we come together right now and stop this nonsense, stop the killings, stop the, the robbery, stop the drugs, stop the theft? What can we do? And when you see somebody doing it, you call them out on it. You don't necessarily need to even call the police. You just tell them like, hey, bro, get that out the neighborhood, man. We don't do that over here. We got kids over here or we got elderly over here. That's all it is, man, is dialogue. We need to dialogue with each other more and take everything else out the equation. If you live in a community where it's mixed up and say you got racism in your community, dialogue about it. Yo, why don't you like me because of the color of my skin? Or what makes you think that I want to rob you? What makes you think that uh, if I'm a police officer, what makes you think that I want to kill you? You know what I'm saying? And just fix it and talk about it. And tell, let the police tell me, hey, man, I don't want to kill you. I just, I'm scared when I do stops because most of the time, you know, uh, it'd be this part, you know, this type of person to kill me or to try to fight me. And then as a black man, be like, well, I'm scared because when I see it on the news, you know, you guys, when you stop me, you know, you want to kill me. This guy got choked out or, you know, and end it and let him know, like, no, nah, man, that's not the case. I want to see you do better. And I want to, I want to feel safe when I walk down the street. It all starts with a simple dialogue and understanding each other, where we come from. Yeah, well said, Cash. And I, I agree with you there. I think that as, as a father, as parents, no matter what, what race or religion you come from, we all want the same thing for our kids. We want them to be safe. We want them to be healthy. We want them to succeed. And we don't want to see them depressed. We don't want to see them hurt. We don't want to see them sick. So we're all united in that front. So we all have more in yeah. common than we think. And, and one thing that we all have in common is none of us are going to make it out of here alive. We're, we're all we're all destined for the graveyard yeah. at some point here we only get one shot at life here nothing's going to save us from that so trying to live in some type of peace uh only makes sense here so i, I don't understand yeah. why it seems like there's such a uh people with such an agenda to divide and keep everybody separate and i think the media is more responsible for that than anything it, it, they definitely are and it's uh like i say it's always around the time of an election it's always around the time where some bills getting passed it's always around the time where they're, they're trying to distract you from something that's important going on and they use something that's easy. What is the easiest thing to get people going that they can use? Race. They can always use race because it was such a big issue at one time in our country. It's not a big thing anymore. You could tell, I'm, you're talking to a dude that's half black, half white. You're talking to a dude that walks down the street. I got white neighbors. I got black neighbors. I got brown neighbors. I got everybody around me. I interact with everybody on a daily basis. So I used to work. We got everybody coming in and everybody loved me. You know what I'm saying? I loved everybody that came through the door. They all, when they're in the store, they're talking to each other. It's 
it's, it's easy to start a race thing when people don't read or people don't have the knowledge to understand like okay what's the why are they pushing this on this news station why this today because yesterday it was all about trump or it was all about obama or it was all about this or it was all about that why today is it about race why is, is it what you gotta think it's an agenda they want you to not they want y'all to be mad at each other so you don't be mad at what they're doing behind your back that's it yeah I, I agree, Cash. I, I work for the railroad myself. I'm a railroad mechanic. I've been doing that for 20 years. Uh, and it's, it's a complete melting pot of everybody there. So it's like uh, we don't see it. I don't see it in the, in, the, in the culture that I work with. We all get along. We all respect one another. And it's not until we, we have these uncomfortable moments like this that, that where all of a sudden it's like everyone kind of feels on edge about the topic. You're afraid to say this. You're afraid to say that. And it's like they make it that way, you know, and it yeah. shouldn't be that way. You're right. You're definitely right. It shouldn't be that way. And that's why I say, man, when I talk to people, one thing you got to do is you got to come at them with love. You can't get mad at what they say. If you're going to be the, the one that you feel you got the knowledge that you can spread it and you can get a point across to someone, then you have to be willing to, to eat the shit, man. When they say something to you, when they're talking to you, you got to be able to be like, OK, I know they about to get a little hot and they're going to say this and they're going to say that. I'm going to let them know that I understand and it's OK for you to feel the way that you feel. If that's how you feel truly, then that's fine. But I'm just trying to give you a different narrative and let you know that I'm not your enemy. I'm not your enemy. I'm here next to you. I'm just letting you know that I feel like your stance could be a little bit deterred and and should be brought a little bit this way, man, because it's all about love. If you keep love at the core and unity at the core of any discussion that you have with anybody, it says in the Bible that a soft response turns away wrath. You know what I'm saying? And that's the truth. A soft response will turn away the wrath of anybody that you talk to, as long as you talk to them with love, man. And that's it. And I'm not a religious dude at all. I just apply some things from that book, man, that it helps me get by. Yeah, I, I, I think the number one thing from that book is just treat other people the way you want to be treated. And I think if we all did that, I, I think the majority of the problems we're even seeing would go right away very quickly. Thanks. You definitely right. 100%. Well, uh, obviously, you know, uh, you're hot stuff right now on social media here. You're gaining uh, a ton of traction. What kind of wh what are you hoping uh, to do here moving forward from where you're at? You're going to continue posting the videos. What do you see for yourself yeah. for the future? Well, first and foremost, man, as you can see, it's a mix between me talking to the people and putting my babies out there. Because <laughs> like, I'm a proud dad. I love being a father. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to keep doing this, man. I got overloaded with people bro that that just show me that they care and they want change and they want i don't know why they feel like i'm a voice that can say the things that that I guess they want to say and that they can't say because they're either white or they're, they're black or they, they feel this i won't listen I, I don't know what it is i'll just say i'll say thank god that's all i'm gonna say is thank god that he even gave me this platform if, if i'm supposed to be saying the things that i'm saying then i'm gonna keep on saying them until i guess ain't nobody listening anymore and I hope that when people are listening, that it does inspire a little bit of change in them and they can see, like, I, I feel like I feel like I'm going to bring people together, man. God is going to bring them together. And maybe I'm just a tool being used to do it. However it goes, I don't know. But I feel like it's going to be something positive. And if it turns out to be something bigger, then that's great. That's amazing. But I'll never stop. This is how I am every day. Yeah, God bless you for it, Cash, and I, I think it's important what you're doing, and if anything, it's, it's, it's giving your kids a great example of what to look up to and, and what to emulate in their own life. So I think just what you're doing for your own kids is a great service by speaking your piece and getting your word out there and being authentic and, and causing change, which I think is what you're doing. And the last thing I want to hit you with here, Cash, I love to ask all the dads that I get on the podcast, what type of advice do you have for the new dad or for that about-to-be father who's out there listening? Man... Always stay there for your children. And look, I'm all for families, right? But if you if you have a kid, you have to take care of that kid no matter what. No matter what you do, you have to take care of that kid. And if you cannot make the relationship work with the mother, because that's a big problem a lot of times. If you're a young dad and you're with somebody and it's toxic, first I'm going to tell you to try and stay until you can't anymore. Until it gets too toxic to where it hurts you and your child mentally or physically you feel me and just to love that kid love that kid like you wanted to be loved when you were growing up and be what you wanted to have growing up that's what i do i try to be the dad that i wanted you feel me so i try to be the dad that i wanted that's what i would say for any new father be the dad that you wanted growing up simple as that 
Yeah, very well said. I love the message. It's been an honor for me. I got to say, Cash Lee Kelly, you're a first-class father all the way. And thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time here on First Class Fatherhood. No problem, brother. I really appreciate you. Thank you.